to see you, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Okay, welcome, Alexis. Welcome, uh, Dr. Rhodes. Welcome, Dr. Shabazz um, and Ms. Bridges. Um, let's see here. Just... All right. So given that it's 2.02, um, and welcome, Pamela. Nice to see you. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and call our meeting to order. Uh, this is Wednesday, January 11th, a meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. And pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. And I will also announce that this meeting is being recorded. Um, I'm going to do a sound check um, and I will begin with you, Dr. Rhodes. I'm here and I can see everyone and I can hear everyone. Excellent. Good to see you. And Dr. Shabazz. Yes, connection solid. Good to see everyone. Excellent. Uh, and Alexis. Hi, thank you. I'm just, I have my video off because I shoved lunch down my throat really quick. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> okay, well, we can hear you. So that's good. Um, and Ms. Bridges. I can see me, I can hear you, but nobody, I don't know why no one can see me, but I can hear you. I'm trying right. to figure it out as we All go right. along. Thank you. Okay. And uh -huh. yes, we can hear you. And how about you, Pamela? I can uh, hear and see everyone. Excellent. All right. Um, I will say that Yvonne will not, or will, she will be with us, but she'll be late and Hollow will be unable to join us today for our meeting. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. This is our first meeting of the new year. Hope everyone is um, healthy and looking forward to this meeting. We have a lot to cover here. Um, and, oh, I just, I called this meeting to order as a January 11th meeting. And so I want to correct the record. <laughs> um, I pulled up the wrong agenda. It's actually the January 9th meeting. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, that was our agenda for Wednesday's listening session. So that is a good segue. Um, we have our listening session on Wednesday. Um, I am told that it is getting out there. The word is getting out. I heard from uh, Carly Token. Ah, <laughs> the last name just went out of my head. Taktinab, I think, is how you pronounce it. Or Ms. Bridges. How do, you, how do you pronounce Carly's last name? Tartikov. Tartikov, yeah. Um, I spoke with um, Carly today, and she said that she had received an invitation to the event from multiple different um, people and channels and groups. So that's really great. And I thank you for all your efforts in getting the word out. Um, you should have received an email from me with uh, information for our slideshow. And so I want to make sure that we get that, we get the program pieces of the session settled today. So before we kind of move into the details, are there any general questions right now about the program? And is everyone, is there anyone who is unable to attend the program? Okay, great. Um, Pamela, will both you and Jennifer be in attendance? I believe so, um, but I will double check with with Jennifer. I know that I plan to be. Okay, great. Um, I think I'll have to talk to Jennifer then just about if she's going to be the person that's bringing folks in. Um, so just to give a broad overview of the way that it's been set up, it's set up as a webinar, which is similar to a council meeting in that there will be the panelists that you can see and then 
everybody else will be um, in the audience. And so when a person raises their hand to speak, I have asked that Jennifer bring that person into the room. Um, if they would like to turn their camera on, they can. They can also um, be in the room, but leave their camera off. So there's an option. If they want to be seen, they can, but they don't have to be. Um, so we'll begin by opening the meeting, just like any other meeting would open up. Tomorrow, I'll be talking to the congressman's aide just to um, verify the way in which the congressman would like to communicate. So I think he would like to give some remarks initially. Um, and then we will move into the five injury areas. Did anybody feel like I identified them wrong in terms of which injury area they had um, wanted to present on? Okay. Um, and Ms. Bridges, I um, so the injury areas, the five that uh, I had had placed in the email left me and you without an area. Oh, find that. Um, so I wanted to speak with you about maybe whether you'd like to give a general overview of what the five injury areas are or what your comfort level was in terms of speaking during that presentation piece. I think I will think about it and get back to you. That's perfect. That sounds great. So either way, we'll get that covered. Um, did everyone have a chance to look generally at the slideshow? or the, the, the slide deck. So what I'll do now is I'm gonna pull that up here. Hang on one second, please. Just one second. having some technical difficulties. Um, yeah, it's saying that the host disabled screen sharing. So I, um, Michelle, I just made you a co-host so that you should be able to do screen sharing now. I, um... Perfect, I think that worked. <laughs> Good, <laughs> can everyone see that? Okay, excellent. So this was the slide deck that we used last time. So it's gonna get updated a bit. Um, some of the items were removed, um, but we have this invitation to brave space that I thought, I thought that was really beautiful when Hala read that. Um, do folks want to keep that slide in for Wednesday? Anyone who would not like to keep it in? All right. Um, and then how about ropes? Do you feel like that's something that we should review again? Or you think given that we're in a webinar, I, I don't feel strongly that we have to put this slide in, but if folks would like it in, we can leave it in. So Michelle, uh, Dr. Shabazz suggested that you do full screen for the slides, um, oh, if that's okay. possible. Sure. Let me see what I can do here. Did that do it? That's easier on the eyes. Thank you. <laughs> I I recommend that I, I said would like to suggest that our operating norms, given that this is a webinar, and um, we uh, could probably not need the slide, but suffice it to say, when we do open up the the public comment listening session. Uh, community engagement portion is just a moment to, uh, um, you know, to highlight uh, our general operating norms. 
Um, and I don't think any more than that uh, would, would need be said. Perfect. Okay, that works. Um, and then we have, so when I'm in this, oh, I see what it's doing in the full screen. I'm trying to figure out because I'm in the full screen for. for Please go, go back to your other. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see how I do that. Is that, is that all right? Just for now to. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, then we had an indigenous statement and I wanted to check with the group about we so I think what we learned last time is that we there was a lot happening in the beginning before we got to the listening and here we're adding the injury areas so I was trying and with the congressman's comments as well I was trying to think about what was um, what pieces we wanted to keep in and what do folks feel about the indigenous statement um, and how we would like to go go forward with that? Any anyone? I, I, I'd again uh, would suggest it's we're we're in a different framework than the in person first time community engagement program at the Hitchcock Center for the Environment. We're 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 in a Zoom. And I think the reality of, as you say, not uh, you know being being more time conscious with the program that a lot of our operating norms, a lot of the uh, this this particular uh, slide and uh, from the slide deck, a lot of that could really be truncated in favor of you know just just getting right to what we're what we're there to do. Excellent. Okay, and I see Alexis's hand is raised on this. Hi. Yeah. So I, I guess I was maybe this is a uh, a question. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I so I I guess I was going to ask if there was like amongst the agenda, right? Like, is if this is one agenda item, this entire slideshow, including the the points of harm, how long are we hoping for this? in entirety to last and I guess that that was going to lead into a question of like then it, it, we're not are, are we are we speaking our own words to towards the areas of harm or are we reading off of that piece from Twitter um and I guess that that I think would help me to think about how what how much time we have and whatnot that's a great question. So let's back into it. Um, let me just welcome Yvonne and make sure that Yvonne can be heard and can hear us. I I hear you and I and I hope you can hear me too. Yes, excellent. Um, and Yvonne, you're going to be able to attend on Wednesday. Is that right? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, and I kind of was going to ask the same question, Alexis. I mean, I prepared something because you said we had about a minute, and it incorporates some of what was in the list. But I added some of my own to it. I mean, it's still within a minute, I think, if I talk fast. <laughs> and I can share it with you if you want. Yeah, that would be great. So I was hoping we could each go through. Hala sent me what she put together as well. And similarly, she took some from the uh, outline that I sent you, and then she included her own pieces as well. So I think that as long as, and, and also if if one would want to speak to their own personal experience, I think there's flexibility, but I think keeping it to a minute and a half max, um, I was foreseeing 15 minutes for the sort of, um, you know, uh, first segment, um, but it, it's probably going to be more like 20, I would imagine, with just sort of getting people in and all of that. Um, so why don't we do that? Why don't we go through Yvonne? Do you want to um, do you want to start by sharing with us just to give us a, a sense of what you did? I'm and, looking for mine. Give me a okay. second. Okay, <laughs> I, sure. I'm, I'm I'm navigating between two computers. So hold on. Sure. Um, and so you know, I think that if you all send me what you have for your bullets um, to answer your question more directly, Alexis. I think we can have a slide and 
we can have, you know, maybe not overwhelm the slide with a bunch of bullets, but have some bullets on there, but then you can present and use the slide more as a reference than necessarily going through each item on it. Does did, that... you, did you say we were going to create a slide or that we're just going to talk over the slides that you that you created? Yeah, I think if we use this slide deck here, so like, okay, for peoplehood, which I think is Alexis, we'll get to that. So someone will do an overview of the five injury areas, then we'll, when peoplehood, which will be the first one, um, we'll get to that. And then Alexis will present on peoplehood. Um, but she'll have given me in advance whatever she would like to be included in the actual slide. I don't need to see what anyone is planning to present verbally. I just need to get the slideshow ready for the packet, essentially, and for the public. So, okay. Well, I found I found what I wrote. I mean, if you want me to share, I could. I don't know if you want me to email it to you or you want me to just read it out loud yeah i'd love for you if you're comfortable just to give everybody else a sense of you know what you're doing and then that might help us to come up with some kind of questions to fine tune things a bit so yeah that'd be great yvonne if you want to read what you've can read. i share my screen yeah yeah let me unshare i think that's going to require you being um pamela can yvonne yeah. share? So I tried to change the settings so that multiple uh, panelists can share. So um, Yvonne, uh, try sharing your screen. And if it doesn't work, then I uh, can make you a co-host and uh, you should be able to share that way. But yeah, it shows for me that there's um, multiple sharing allowed. Can you see my screen? No. Oh, hold on. Maybe I need to switch it. Let me see here. Yeah, I think you need to stop sharing, Michelle. Oh, I do. Then, yeah, okay. and then that will allow. Try that, Eva. Yeah. Oh, we have a chat in this. I've never seen a chat chat in our meetings. Mm -hmm. I don't think. <laughs> it's not allowing you to to share. Hold on, I'm I'm finding the um. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to try and share. Yes. So far, so good. Yep. I can't make it. I wish I could make it bigger. I don't know how to do that. Can you see it? I'm just going to read it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I had my topic is poverty is wealth and poverty, right? As I understand for people for for black people, slavery established a wealth gap between people of African descent. So that's right from the from the deck you sent me. Uh, and the labor of the enslaved made the slave owners even more wealthy over many generations. And black people continue to endure discrimination in employment, housing, health care, and other economic areas that perpetuate poverty and cut off access to building wealth. So pertinent factors include, so I listed them, because these are all the things I feel like um, make it so, I mean, some folks are talking about these things anyway before we get to mine. Um, but I basically put, you know, limited access to quality education in our communities, a direct result of like redistricting, um, racist city planning practices and town city politics, um, discrimination in the job arena. So black job candidates are scrutinized with different requirements than their white counterparts and are often overlooked for promotions. Many families then rely on minimum wage jobs or multiple part-time jobs to support their families. Um, discrimination in loans and lending practices, laws that result in black incarceration at enormously higher levels than our numbers in the general population, which limits resources and opportunity for a whole population of black people for many generations. Um, number five is our communities are struggling with inequities in healthcare that affect the mental and physical abilities of our people. And number six is being denied access to real estate or land ownership as an asset as a resource to wealth and limited access to knowledge about how to build assets. And so these issues run deep and are complex and multifaceted and black people have endured. So reparations is just one step in eradicating these issues. 
Excellent. And you have some examples where you planning on? Well, I, I mean, I have a couple of personal examples. Mm -hmm. um, I threw some stuff in here about, you know, when black people are able to build wealth and opportunities, sometimes they're at the mercy of white landowners or banks or corporations anyway. And so systemic racism plays out on local levels as black people lose their land or assets are seized by municipalities or, you know, they, oops, sorry, I lost my police. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also, I mean, I know many of you are familiar with the podcast, the 1619. So episode six talks about this family, June and Angie Provost who own their family farm in the South. And they were trying to be, you know, applying for loans, floater loans, which is something that's typical with farms, you know, as they head towards a harvest. But the, this family was denied or delayed their loans until they lost their farm. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that some of those practices or things maybe folks don't know much about is one of the ways that um, that um, black people are uh, denied um, amassing wealth and adds to the idea of wealth and poverty. Mm -hmm. So this is an excellent model for um, how we can. So what would be ideal, Yvonne, is if you send me of this what you'd like to go into the slides. And that can be um, more broad, or you might want to have these specific like one through six pieces in the slide. And then maybe you'll choose to not include in the slide the personal examples, but you verbalize those in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that would be, if if folks agree, I think that might be a good way for us to go through all of them. I do think having some consistency is good. So we don't want one person necessarily, I don't think just speaking solely to personal experience and not including any bullets. We don't want all bullets and maybe no personal in terms of, you know, just keeping it alive, but a minute and a half or a minute is not very long. So. Was that a minute? That was too long. But um, I was curious <laughs> about because I, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I, while I was writing it, I realized that I touch on a lot of the subjects that we would have been talking about previously anyway. So I, I felt like it was a good way to kind of sum up things as, you know, some of those other factors that, that let's say, you know, Alexis or, you know, or Dr. Shabazz is covering will filter into like, well, this is also how it affects um, access to wealth and, and also ways that, poverty is, um, you know, perpetuated in our Absolutely. communities. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that speaking um, wherever we can as locally as possible, like, I think it's important to have, you know, the broader view, but I also think speaking to our local experience is really important um, as much as we can do that. Um, would anyone else like to just get feedback or, or talk about what they plan to present on in their injury area? I think so. Okay, yeah, Dr. But, Rhodes. You know, I'm, I'm always used to speaking from bullet points. Mm -hmm. So, and mine is education. Mm -hmm. so, um, so the correlation of education, tell me your education attainment level and I can, will be able to, to tell you well, what your, and especially if you're African-American, your health outcomes are likely to be. I can predict that. I can also tell, tell you about the rates of incarceration if you are black and in and, and your education level. Um, in terms of rates of incarceration, one, point under here is that jails, juvenile detention centers, and prisons are filled with Black people who have been diagnosed or misdiagnosed with ADHD. Mm -hmm. Filled with them, the jails, uh, jails, juvenile detention centers, and prisons. And for Black people, they are generally misdiagnosed, not diagnosed, and is, or not treated. Um, also, if you tell me your education level, I can tell you 
the uh, you know, in terms of what your wealth and poverty will be like because of the um, unequal, not only unequal access to education, but uh, unequal access to quality ed education and how that impacts upon black people. Secondly, and the other, the other part is, uh, tell me your education level, and I can tell you what your access to home ownership is, and, uh, home ownership is, and other wealth build, building tools are. In other words, your education level and your ed and your education attainment level. If you are black, we can, I can, or anyone else can look and tell you what kinds of experiences you will have. In, uh, uh, in relationship to health, wealth, poverty, uh, incarceration, et cetera. Here you go. Excellent. Okay, that's I like I love the way that you have framed that. And so do you, um, Dr. Rhodes, will you send me whatever bullets you would like to be included in the slide and I'll get them prepared? I'll get that prepared. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. Perfect. Um, would either Alexis or Dr. Shabazz like to, and also Ms. Bridges, if there's a particular area of injury that um, you would like to speak about, I don't think there's any reason why more than one person can't speak to it. So I just wanted to also uh, open up that possibility. Hi, okay. I'm sorry. I'll jump in. I, I'm like heading back to work right now. So you actually might lose me as I'm driving, but um, I, so I'm sorry that I timed this poorly, but um, I'm a little, I'm a little distracted right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. We'll keep an eye out. D Alexis, did you, did you want to go over your slide? Because we can do that if you feel now or later or whatever is best for you. Yeah, let me let me get back to my um my office and then I'll, okay. I'll well hopefully I get back in time before we're over yeah. Okay, that sounds great. Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Bridges. I think you were about. To, I saw you on mute. So, um, were you about to say something? I guess no. I said that I I heard what you were saying and I'll that's I'm keeping that in mind. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Um, it's, it's hard when you're not seeing somebody to, <laughs> to know, I probably could have, uh, um, intuited that if I could see you, but <laughs> I, I don't know why, because all the other times you can, but then when you're asking the audience, they're saying they can hear and see everybody. So I don't know if no one can see me or just you, Jen said she couldn't raise, give a thumbs up if you, um, cannot see Deborah. just thumbs up. I cannot see. Alexis. Oh, sorry. That was my thumbs up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think all of us aren't able, have you tried turning your camera, like going to that little three dots on the top right hand corner of your box and say, does it give you the ability to stop video? Well, yeah, I can see stop video, which I just did. Okay. And then when you do that, is it now say start video or there's not? Yes. Try that. I put that and my picture comes back up. I'm looking at me and I'm looking at you. <laughs> okay. There's three little dots. Stop incoming video. I'll figure this out. I don't okay. want to hold everybody up. One other option is you could drop, like you could go out, like get off the meeting and then come back in and see if somehow that reboots things. So if okay, I'll try that. that. I'll try that. Okay, perfect. Um, all right, so Dr. Shabazz, um, would you like to review any parts of your presentation? I can, but if anyone else wants to go, uh, I, can, I can come later or come now, either way. I think Dr. Do everyone else has, um, and Alexis, I think needs to do it a little bit later. So, okay. ah, there you are <laughs> with your fabulous haircut. <laughs> it's a mess today. Yeah, <laughs> did what you said. That worked. Yeah, okay, great. That's good. I'm so glad. Okay, welcome. Um, all right, go ahead, Dr. Shabazz. 
So um, in the area of, of criminal uh, justice system, punishment, uh, the, um, I think the evidence of, uh, of our need in this area is, uh, can be located in a number of places. I think we can uh, look at and, or try to, as we should ask ourselves, for a perspective on uh, from the police department, we could ask in terms of are the areas you see of disparities, of um, any particular place where race is entering the picture in terms of the policing in our town. I don't have the exact language at this point before me as others have had. I'm just speaking to the idea that um, what, we have, what we have as far as data, I like the way Dr. Rhodes was approaching it, but he put a lot of that on that he can do it. He can show you. He can show you the, the connections of this from the educational level of attainment of an Amherst student, of an Amherst family. But it's really the data can show that, right? So do we want to really confront the, the data? Do we want to talk about where we are in terms of accessing or asking different units of the criminal justice system, the court system. I haven't yet put it fully down to Dave Sullivan, what we could, what we would look for, would like to see from the, the Hampshire County level, from the Northwest District Office level, but they have, they do have data with race information. It's been a part of lawsuits that I've since I've been around. So, but if they could, uh, but when I do really go uh, um, get this request into him, we should see data from the Northwest uh, District Attorney's Office. Um, and do we want to? And then how do we proceed from confronting uh, the data in terms of establishing? What's what a reparative justice work in that area could look like? Um, I think of all the areas of harm, this one is most specifically linked to particular agencies of government because that's how laws are enforced. That's how laws are policed. That's how laws are uh, implemented is through the police and through the district. And then from there, after arrest, then we go to uh, the legal process, all right? Arraignment, indictment, prosecution. And then we go from there, we may go from there into sentencing and to the actual incarceration, punishment, you know, the punitive approach to then locking people away. Um, we can get that. But because we have specific agencies that are involved and that track, that track the data uh, um, divided by, by at least race, racial designation. Won't necessarily get into, it would be a deeper level to get into how many of that, uh, of that black number for this area is people of, with ancestry, in the United States who were enslaved versus others. We might not have data at that granular level, but we can at least talk about more broadly from a standpoint of data if we've got some specific um, you know, agencies that we can ask and approach for what do you have. Um, it's not that we wanna racialize the issue. It's a matter of, is there data in which we can talk about then what are reparative uh, uh, responsibilities with the 
at the state level, we have some uh, Amherst was tagged in some of the, the data around, for example, marijuana prosecution, because this has come up now linked to the money that our money is being modeled after, the cannabis industry, right? The cannabis uh, 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 use or possession when it was illegal. So we have some studies there. They didn't proceed to keep Amherst because of some um, uh, particular reasons, but they were still in the general study of, um, of, 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 of the matter of over-prosecution and over-incarceration of African-Americans for, uh, for cannabis-related crimes and punishment. So um, that's the data that I can speak from. I, I know I've gone over a minute and a half, so I will have to edit this down into bullet points, but, uh, but I'm also raising a more, um, uh, I think it has to be raised in this way. We can't just speak from generalities. We have to speak from where, what is, where is the data how can we access the data? And then from there, uh, in trying to get really informed perspectives on, um, you know, people who are who are having disparate, exp who have, have had disparate experiences to figure out how do we bridge that, prevent that, mitigate that um, from happening in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. And I just, I want to keep in mind that this is a twofold, uh, is there's two folds to the, to the presentation piece of this. One is to educate our community and the folks who are in attendance. Two is to offer some prompts for folks who would like to speak about their experience um, so that they have some framework. Maybe somebody wants to speak to their experience with education or with health. So we want to balance our comments um, in that light so that we're um, not getting so detailed that we sort of lose the point of that, um, but that we are providing some concrete educational material. Um, Dr. Rhodes. Uh, you know, Dr. Chavez, uh, I, you know, one of the things, because this was a minute, we only have a minute, I didn't cite all the sources, but every everything that I'm talking about is backed up by data. Uh, every last one of them. Uh, and I could cite all of those sources, but we don't have that much time. What I can say is that the data corroborates what I'm about to say. Uh, you know, For instance, in the ADHD, ADHD the uh, Journal of American Medicine uh, tracked and qualified and quantified the misdiagnosis uh, and un untreated ADHD and, and African Americans. And they, they did that. Um, and, and that data is there. The data is there for education. If you look up correlation of education with housing, with, um, uh, with wealth, with poverty, with rates of incarceration, et cetera, all of that comes out immediately. And, Different, different data sources are there. And so I guess what I've learned from you uh, while you're saying that, uh, Dr. Sebez, is I really need to preface that what I'm about to say is backed up by real data. If you want the references for that, please contact me and I'll give you. Great. All right, that's excellent. So, um, Again, we'll open up. I will have some music going in the beginning. If possible, we'll open up. We'll, we will be panelists. Um, uh, Congressman McGovern will also be a panelist. Jennifer, so um, both Pamela and Jennifer will be pa panelists. Um, Pamela, I will connect with you and Jennifer after this meeting. We need to send Congressman McGovern a panelist invite. I have the appropriate email address to do that. Um, and then we also need uh, the aides. There are three aides that are going to be with us that night, and they will be coming in as audience members. So um, I can send them. I'll send them just the regular link that everybody else will be using. Um, and then so we're going to we'll hear from Congressman McGovern, we'll go through these areas of injury, and then we will open it up for folks to speak. I did want to ask 
you all um, your opinion on so our rules in terms of how we facilitate meetings allow the chair to ask first for uh, folks who are Amherst residents to speak. Um, and then if time allows for folks who are outside of the Amherst area who may wish to speak, um, they will then have that time um, toward you know the end of the meeting. So I wanted to see if there were any strong opinions on that one way or the other, or if that if sort of following our rules um, works for everybody in that sense. All right, great. Is and anything, Yvonne, were you? Do you have um, kind of like a schedule for the evening? Yes, so I'm gonna be sending, I was just gonna ask you all if you can send me is it reasonable for you to send me your slides by noon tomorrow? Is that okay for everybody? Okay, so I'm going to send you all the agenda um, and that will include the completed slideshow um, so that you can preview the slideshow in advance and have it however you wish to have it. Um, but I generally because we're doing it by Zoom, um, we'll sort of open up with the presentation pieces. And then when we open up, it's going to be considered a public comment period, just like we would do a public comment period here. So folks will raise their hand, but I'd like to be able to give some directions in the beginning to say we're going to begin by asking residents, Amherst residents and stakeholders to raise their hands first. And I'll go in order of bringing people in. Jennifer will bring them in one by one. Um, if we have a hundred people that raise their hand to speak and we'll have to limit the amount of time that each person can speak. If we have five people, then we can give people up to three minutes. Um, so it will really just depend on that. And then we'll save a little bit of time at the end, if possible, if there are folks that are outside of Amherst who would like to speak, I'll then invite them to raise their hand um, and have an opportunity to speak then. Does that work okay for everyone? I think it would be very important, yes. I think it would be very important to have a, um, a clear answer to what are the ways to give us your feedback long form, okay? Mm -hmm. Understanding the time constraint of this listening session, public comment period, um, we do wanna hear and we do wanna follow more than, you know, so if you got more, give us more. We need to have that maybe as a slide. We need to have that as just something that's put in the preface uh, um, to opening the session to public comment. And like you say, whether we have three or we have 300 in the audience uh, for this, the point is, um, and I don't think we'll have 300, but the, the point is whatever number we have, um, people are definitely welcome to put it in, in writing, to send it in a note uh, that, that could be more long form. Um, and it will be received and it will be a part of the body of information and feedback and community engagement that we've 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 had. So if we have that, I don't know if it's what it is, but we need to have that set. Absolutely. Yes, we have we will have a slide that has the email address, the engage Amherst site, all of the pertinent contact information. I'll um, arrange with Jennifer and Pamela that we have that. So when the meeting's starting. We'll have that slide up welcoming people. We'll have the contact information, some music going while we're sort of getting you know, set up. And then we'll have, again, I think is a great opportunity as we're switching to public comment period. And then again, toward the end. I do not believe we will or should <laughs> necessarily have a chat function during this meeting. Um, however, we have talked about these being live streamed and whether, is there going to be capacity for somebody to be monitoring 
the YouTube and the Facebook live stream for questions, like particularly the Facebook live stream. Um, and then like a volunteer, for example, that could monitor that and then feed us back the information. So if there's a question from there, or do we want to just not do that piece of things and just say very clearly from the beginning, unfortunately, we won't be monitoring, you know, the live streams for questions, um, but then of course, give them the contact information again. If I could generate three uh, graduate students or three uh, persons willing to volunteer to uh, uh, in whatever ways we need them to, if, but if to monitor that and then send it to us, uh, you know, via a little, a little, or, or to one of us, to me, and yeah. then I can send to others through through cell phone numbers or or however else we might want to facilitate the. Uh, or, or just openly, just as I'm speaking right now, saying, okay, we have, um, you know, I could be a funnel for that, that uh, if the volunteer said, you know, we did get a question over here uh, via Facebook, or we did get a question over here via uh, YouTube, uh, what do you think about this? Then I could, I could then feed it via our, um, uh, you know, uh, just, you know, saying, hey, we do have a comment. If we're interested, if that's the case, I can get the three uh, individuals emails address and submit it to to uh, wherever I need to submit it. If you do want if we could use that. Yeah, I think that would be great. And I could even build into the um, as we go through the public comment where I can pause. And so like if there's 20 people that have their hand raised, we get to number five, we pause if there's something on one of the live feeds, we take that then we go back to calling on the hands so we can sort of do it that way. Um, Yvonne, I see that your hand is raised. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to be a, like an intermediary too, if that, if you want someone else as a secondary or something. I mean, we did some of this when, um, when I was working at the fine arts center, when we started doing because of the pandemic, doing stuff online, it's, it's really important for folks who can, who, have the ability it's like we we shut off a whole segment if we don't offer that opportunity for folks to be able to send in questions by live feed or by Facebook or whatever that's a whole area of folks we want to be as accessible as we possibly can and you know not doing that means that there's a whole section of folks that don't have access so I think it's a I think we should do it I think also that this is not the first time that we'll be offering this so I think we should have a system in place that we can rely on moving forward so that that it's always something that we can rely on, you know, and I think we should revisit um, maybe at another meeting how we keep those avenues open, even when we don't have a listening session, like how do people submit questions and who's monitoring or managing that when we're not in a in a session. Yeah. Absolutely. And so far, what we've been doing there is if I or Jennifer receive anything, Jennifer receives something, she sends it to me, I send it to you all, like um, with uh, something recent we got from the group at UMass. So we have different, that's what we've been doing so far. But I talked actually with Athena and Brianna a little bit more as we're moving forward, especially with the survey that we're going to be working on, how much more important this is going to become. So I agree with you completely, Yvonne. Um, all right, great. I see that Alexis is back. And Alexis, I wanted to check in with you in terms of Amherst Media. Will you be doing, will you be wearing two hats on Wednesday or you will? Okay. Yeah, just to speak to it a little bit Please. more specifically, um, it's really like a, broadcasting this, especially virtually, is more of a passive role. So like once the ball is rolling, I don't really have to do anything. So I'll be like once I turn it on and put it on the TV, I can sort of just like focus on this. So Perfect. And are you the do you make it do you make the YouTube live or which live streams do you all do over there which all of them oh yeah right now so it'll be live on 17 it'll be live on youtube and it will be live on facebook right okay and what about 
other media that may be in attendance? We did make- Did I have a quick question about that? If we're on those three platforms, are we taking live questions on each of those platforms? I think there's a, an availability on YouTube for people to make comments and, right? I think that we had talked about that a little bit last time, but we hadn't, did we say that someone would be looking on, on one each? I don't remember. Well, that's what we were talking about just before you came back. So I think, yeah, that's why I didn't know what was like, so there's, there's channel 17 won't, they, people won't be, no, but it'll just be YouTube and Facebook. Okay. So yeah, like for example, if Dr. Shab is following Facebook and Yvonne is following YouTube, we can kind of, you know, something like a long line might work. Okay. Awesome. Um, Alexis, do you have the ability to see on channel 17, how many, not who is in attendance, but how many folks are in it or watching? Okay. All right. Um, and as far as other media partners, last time I sent an email out with just a little disclosure about the sensitive nature of what might be spoken about. It is a public me meeting, any media outlet, no matter what side of the political <laughs> realm they're on could show up. They could report on it. We don't have a whole lot of control about that, but I was um, thinking about just making that couple sentence statement that I had sent out last time, which I think um, the folks who did attend um, really appreciated receiving just a little feedback on that. Anyone have any other thoughts on that? Okay. Um, okay, great. So Alexis, did you want to go over your slide before we move on from this? Um, so I have like, I, I was going to email you a better I have like notes right now That's that fine. are a little bit <laughs> fractured, but um, I guess it's just like speaking to um, it, it, being that this is peoplehood, it's speaking to, you know, the destruction of people of African descent's culture and the denial of rights to openly express those cultures, um, the subsequent displacement and um, uh, intentional displacement and disconnect from those cultures um and therefore a infringement upon one's like self-identity um and uh i was going to um i guess it, it speak i i hadn't come up with like the more personal piece of it but it was going to speak to like the the history of um, African Americans, um, you know, self determination being met with violence and um, destruction, um, such as like um, various um, towns and cities and establishments and whatnot, um, um, whether that's, you know, places is things like Black Wall Street, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, that part is a little, <laughs> I need to formulate a little bit better in my emails for you, but um, yeah, that's the general vibe. Awesome. And I did ask um, if you could get me whatever you'd like on the slide piece. So you might, you know, the presentation may take until six o'clock on Wednesday for you to finish, but if you could get me the slides by noon tomorrow, that would be great really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, all right. Excellent. So yes, Yvonne. Um, I just wanted to comment. I mean, the thing that I, that stuck out to me about your, your topic, um, Alexis, is this idea of self-identity. And um, I think it feeds into like the, like the, the destruction of identity in general, you know, so it gets right into like all of the other topics that we're talking about. It sort of, all in this really, you know, soup of things, you know, and one of the ones people don't pay attention to is that, uh, that, that self identity part of it, or identity and cultural part of it. So I'm glad we're 
covering it, you know, because, um, you know, lots of our folks are, you know, they are, are, are tired. I think, you know, we get tired, you know, and, and, you know, and then things get lost. So, um, yeah, I'm, you know, I just wanted to add that, that that was the part that stuck out to me with what you were talking about. And I think there'd be a lot of um, agreeing and connecting um, when you discuss it. Because the idea is to have people also contribute their own story, storytelling. So, and that we're targeted, you know, that it's about, you know, being targeted as a group, you know. Dr. Shabazz? Well, uh, I would say also this is where um, under peoplehood, I often felt that what's being described there as well is the work of preserving um, our history. And so in the case of this being Amherst, it's how are we preserving our local Black Amherst history? and ways in which we can increase the support, ways in which we're receiving ideas uh, and, and, and we'll be looking to, to broadcast those. And so I, I just think that's also a part of um, the, the preservation of a sense of peoplehood, the preservation of a sense of, um, of nationhood is that someone is, is, is preserving our records, Someone is is uh, providing, as Yvonne would say, that that storytelling process, uh, and in many ways, the storytelling process can happen and be and be better supported here for the local history, Black history of Amherst, and then Black history, Black people overall, the freed people overall. That's where those of us who didn't grow up here in Amherst can come into the story as well, and and uh, people who came through here and lived here and contributed you know how are we how are we making those connections so i think it's a it's a big area that we're getting feedback already on and that's one thing i wanted to raise um a quick segue the the previous session there were there were points made about local needs how do we begin to i don't know if in other committees gol or this or that if y'all ever use any kind of of drive that the members of this commission, of this um, uh, AHRA could have access to, but we ought to be building the record of our feedback sessions um, that we could at least all access to ultimately begin to craft our, our recommendations, craft certain proposals from. If there is a, a standard operating practice of other town councils and committees, whatever we can do to facilitate that that there we, we are developing we had the case going toward the wealth gap area um we had the case of the family that lived on hazel avenue and uh if i have that right or, or northampton road whichever it was but lost there you know the home was bought out by amherst college and the ability to have a landed presence and and the wealth and the you know that was just cut out in favor of we'll let you live here till you till you till the the person who owned it died and then you know other family members whatever you're you're out after that that's that was a hell of a story and and you know how do we preserve those stories how are we looking to then have those those stories a, a record of this of this body? I think we gotta gotta figure that one out. So, Dr. Shabazz, I agree, and I actually had thought about whether it made sense to ask either a student or students at UMass or at Amherst College, perhaps someone in the student senate. We have had students reach out and ask how they might be able to contribute to our work, and so. Even just taking the recordings of the listening sessions and beginning to draw out the themes that are coming up to create some sort of data bank for us. Um, and then, of course, when we get the survey, that's a whole nother piece of things. But I think even just listening through our public comment and meetings and then also um, in 
listening sessions. So if, if you have anybody in mind at UMass who might be interested in such a job, um, I'll also reach out to Cyrus at Amherst College and see if there's somebody over there. Um, it, it would maybe be six or 10 hours of community, you know, of volunteer work to go through those recordings and just create something for us that would really pull out the themes. All right. Um, great. Uh, yes, Ms. Bridges. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, it's just a, a question for Dr. Shabazz. When you're talking about the homes on Hazel Avenue um, and Amherst College buying one and, and the stories about it are um, to put out there, are you talking about no one has done it yet or or the families aren't doing that i didn't quite get it because my computer went in and out so i really couldn't get the end of what you're talking about hazel avenue sure no, i think michelle addressed it it's, it's how do we just extract from our previous sessions comments that have been made digest those and then we have it as an ongoing record because I'm, um, I don't want to summarize it myself. I think it's right if we got somebody to just look at that, that particular session at the Hitchcock Center and uh, summarize what was presented there, then boom, that, that can go as part of, uh, you know, that's become a part of our evolving record. How we want to think reparations can address that, that's, a, that's another question we can, we can talk about. But, uh, but no, my, I was just saying, how do we keep this evolving record of, of, of what's been presented in our in our session. Okay. And just to follow up on that, Ms. Bridges, where I think there might have been a, a disconnect is um so yeah because my my sound keeps going in and out. So that's why I, I heard that and then I wanted to clarify. Yeah, I, I think the piece the piece you possibly missed is um so there was a there was a um story that came through at the Hitchcock Center that um, the resident is not there to be able to speak to it. So Dr. Shabazz read their statement. They, their grandmother had a house on in the Snell Hazel area and Amherst College offered to purchase it. Um, and in return said, we'll take care of it for you. But when you pass away, it will become ours. Oh, oh I know who. Okay. Yeah. So that was, I think, what Dr. Shabazz was, was relating to there. And so stories like that, that come up in our listening sessions, how we pull them out and get them recorded properly, basically, um, for ourselves so that okay. we may, yeah, so that we may, um, as we begin to look at, you know, how the funds should be, how the plan should be built, essentially. Does that clarify it more? Mm -hmm. I right. hear it. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, we, it's already, it's 3.05 and we do have two other topics that I wanna make sure that we get to. We can move through them a little bit more quickly though, I think. Um, and we also have to have a public comment period. Um, so I'm gonna call the public comment period now. And um, just let me, um, excuse me, I'll pull up the, um, so I'm calling public comment now. Anyone who is here and the attendees who wishes to make a public comment can do so by raising their hand now. And um, please state your name and where you live and make your comment. And we will not be responding to comments, but we will be listening carefully. So if you would like to make a public comment now, please uh, raise your hand. All right, not seeing any. Um, Ms. Bridges, I see that your hand is still raised. Is that from... All right. <laughs> um, okay, so the two other items are one, the survey. I uh, hope you have all received the email that I sent that came from the Donahue Institute um, with a scope of work for the survey. Um, so we're gonna talk about that briefly. And then the other piece, because there's some time sensitivity, actually kind of two pieces that are within the realm of our community engagement. We do need to um, 
get back to Meg Gage and the League of Women Voters um, Racial Justice Committee about the possibility of doing something in partnership with them and Dr. Sandy Darity and potentially a panel. Um, and so what I'm proposing here and what Meg thought would be the best way to go about that is that two, one to two members of our group um, so that we stay under a quorum, meet with one to two members of their group to have a discussion about how that might look. And then um, whoever on our group was in that was in that um, meeting could report and bring that back to us. So is there anybody here that would like to volunteer to be one of those two people? Ms. Bridges? You're muted, Ms. Bridges. <laughs> Sorry again. Um, would this be also meeting with Sandy? Um, no, this would just be more of a planning meeting, um, but I, I could see it like kind of leading into as we got closer to the event, if we had the event, mm -hmm. that the folk, whoever the folks were that were doing this um, would maybe help to facilitate sort of having the program, you know, because we can't all. It, it would be, it would be a great thing for, for us to uh, listen to Sandy and, and he's an amazing person. And as far as reparation, he's done a lot and knowing him since all through high school and whatnot, it, it wouldn't be, it, it would be great to just listen to him and, and get with him. Yes. Us. Definitely. I think that would be a great, uh, you, you can't ignore him. <laughs> no, no. And I don't Absolutely think, not. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I agree. And I think that, um, you know, the piece that I think and I said this in a previous meeting, is um, Dr. Darity has done so much um, when it comes to reparations and still he's contributing um, in, a, in a, as I understand it, a profound way into the California Reparations Task Force and doing um, the economics around that. And so um, I think that it's really important that we have this connection. So many of us, Dr. Shabazz has a connection to Sandy, Ms. Bridges, um, I think that Meg does as well. So many in our community do. Um, and so I would love for us to find a way. I just, one of the pieces that Dr. Darity doesn't agree with is local reparations. <laughs> um, and we're doing local reparations already. So we have to find a way where we can sort of bridge that and create a program, I think, that allows for multiple perspectives to be discussed, but also helps us in our community to move us forward with what we're doing. Um, Dr. Rhodes? Yes. Um, if no one else wants to be on this two-person committee to meet with the LB, I definitely would like to do so. Okay. Right. Uh, so, so that's one. Two, in relationship to the League of Women Voters and us co uh, collaborating that, with them, it is something that we need to do as a matter of course, as related to our charge. If you look at the charge, we are uh, charged with working with other groups. Uh, on this. So yes, um, I, I definitely would if no one else. If someone else wants to be a part of that working group, I'd be more than happy to step down. But if no one else wants to, I'll be right there. Excellent. Thank you, Dr. Rhodes. Yes, Dr. Spaz. Yes, so uh, I, I as well. I mean, however, that's to be, um, uh, uh, I, I mean, let me just say it this way. Um, I have questions that may be of help to the process. I, uh, I'm, I'm curious, there's 9,250 if they both develop the questionnaire and conduct the survey, a 5,000 if it's just development. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Are we on two different topics here? Yeah, uh, Dr. Shabbat, <laughs> we're talking about the um, the okay. League of Women Voters um, presentation with Dr. Um, Darity, potentially. Oh, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> I was back on the uh, survey. That's all right, that's all right, Dr. Shabazz. It happens as we go down the road, and it's a really long road. Oh, yeah. right. Well, listen, on the on the this one, man, I, I agree with with uh, Sister Deborah that if we could work to to build out a a webinar, I mean, so the 11th is going to be so crucial uh, to this as getting us warmed up. But if we could do one um, and, and, and I think that's fully a part of our work, fully a part of our charge. I completely agree. But man, just a local conversation with a national and international leader like Dr. Darity. Uh, it, you know, I, I got a little taste of it when he uh, um, appeared and spoke at the um, uh, memorial service for, for Dr. Jules Chemetsky. But I think what we have to be clear local reparations work is fighting for and educating about and helping to bring about the the uh the work that Sandy is talking about at the federal level so to have a conversation with him about where are we in that process you know is president biden going to create a commission on the martin luther king day uh 2023 or or sometime very soon this year going to announce the creation of a federal commission okay if that's happening update us tell us how do we support that i think that's a theme for the 11th as well with congressman mcgovern okay let's support this at that level i mean to tell us and then to tell us how are we going to get this freedman registration process Beginning, when is it going to begin? Because if we could be a test case locally here in Amherst for actually bringing in the resources to help people find their genealogical DNA connection to where they were enslaved in, their, in the history of the United States, bringing all of those genealogical resources to bear and can begin to register themselves as a freed person, part of the freed people, of the United States of America. Let's get that registration process going right here in Amherst. You, you, you dig, you follow? Let's do it here in Amherst. So I think, you know, this project, uh, I don't think it needs to be just about the book. I need to think it needs to be about where are we now and how can we help Dr. Darity to move the, the proposal forward on the federal level that you've so brilliantly outlined the basis for and the process, how do we advance it right here in, in Amherst? Let's advance that vision right here in Amherst. I'd love to, to, to do that and, and promote that locally and on a national level. It's totally consistent with our charge. Awesome. Okay. So I will report back to Meg on this conversation. And then um, it sounds like we have at, at least um, Dr. Rhodes and, and Dr. Shabazz has some questions. Um, I'll certainly try to facilitate um, you know, some of that as well. So um, great. It's just one uh, question, Dr. Shabazz, sure. are, are you saying you would like to be on this two-person group? Because I can step down for it from it. I only was volunteering because I really wanted to have two people in it. No, I think you should go ahead because, I, hey, I was already, I was back on the survey and I thought we were calling a committee on the survey question, you see? So that was actually volunteering. But that, if there was a session, if there was something moving forward on the survey piece, uh, because I know we didn't have a motion to agree to it or anything. So I was already there. This is separate. Just know that I'm in 100% support with whatever feedback you want to give or you give to, to Meg Gage. Just, yeah, just keep us all in the loop. Of course, absolutely. Okay. All right. So quickly before we move to the survey, um, I want to share with you a really wonderful opportunity that has come um, to us um, by Dr. Carly Tautakov um, and others at Amherst Neighbors. Is anyone familiar with Amherst Neighbors? 
I am. Okay. Um, so Amherst Neighbors, I'm going to just actually hang on. Uh, Michelle. Yes. Uh, if you would bear with me and, and if you could um, delay that and let's get into the survey because I'm going to have to leave yeah. for doctor's appointment. And sure. by the way, same doctor's appointment for the first time in my entire life. I have a black physician. Mm. <laughs> and and that's in, in, remarkable. And not only that, last week I had and met with a chiropractor down here, and he also was black. Wow. I, you're and that's in Florida, yes? Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. It is. <laughs> Um, okay, yes, we can do surveys. So I'm going to share, we'll come back to Amherst Neighbors. I do, I'm, I am hoping that we can, um, at least because the date is fast approaching. So, but let's go to the survey while Herb is here. Yeah, because I, I have, a, I have to leave too in like five minutes. Okay, all right. So maybe what I'm going to do then for the Amherst Neighbors opportunity, we have been invited to give a program to the Amherst Neighbors open to the entire Amherst community, but supported by them, um, co-sponsored by them. Um, and it's such a wonderful opportunity because they're giving us the ability to basically have whatever educational program we think would be good for the community right now. Um, so Carly and I had a great discussion today. And what I'm going to do is follow up with you all in an email about that. Just please don't respond all to me. Just please respond only to me and Jennifer and Pamela so that we don't get into any issue with that. Um, so let me pull up the survey, the um, scope of work here. Can everybody see my screen? Okay, great. Um, so here we go. So We've been talking now for a few uh, meetings about working with the Donahue Institute on a scope of work um, to, to develop a survey. And Carrie Spitzer of the Donahue Institute, who we worked with on the Black Census, created this uh, scope of services for us. And so the next step is for myself and Carrie and uh, one other person to meet um, to get a little bit, maybe some questions answered. Ultimately, this is gonna to have to go to the town council to, to approve the um, money piece of things. So we need to think about that, but let's just open the floor up. Did everyone have a chance to review this? Yes. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, please, I'm yeah. The town council, I thought just given that his problem is going to be under $10,000, can't the town manager do that on his own? Well, he may, um, he may be able to, do, so what we need to talk about is whether we're asking for the town to pay for this or whether we're asking for a distribution from our, from the reparations uh, fund. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I would suggest that we say that we're asking the town to pay for this. And then uh, that uh, because just because the time period and not having to go through town council and that the uh, town council then at some point will be asked to uh, reimburse the town out of uh, the distributions uh, that are due to uh, AHRA. It's only a timing thing. If it takes a lot of time to go through the town council, that's the way I would like to, I, I would suggest, suggest doing it. Okay. I agree. Um, Unless you know something otherwise, I would think that just a request to the town manager um, would, would, would be sufficient. And because uh, I thought they, yeah, and, and then they figure out where they're pulling it from. And I think we also need to decide if we want to go with both tasks, which will be the 9,250 and will include an analysis or the $5,000 uh, option, which means we have to do the analysis. Um, so I'm looking for comments on that. 
I, I definitely would say that we need to have uh, the Dining Institute do the analysis also. Again, because and this is going going to be under ten thousand dollars with both them involved uh, included. That this is a service that we really need to take advantage of, and it uh, saves us from doing that analysis ourselves. Uh, and and that data analysis, I know, I know, I mean, you can do it. Thank you. Yeah. So let them do the data analysis. I agree. No, I don't see there any, there's any point in like paying for a part of it. I think we, I mean, we're relying on their, some of this is their expertise to, and they can help us look. I mean, and we have our own particular way of looking at and understanding some of the data, but it'd be nice to have someone in the room or, or someone who, you know, they can present with us, present it in a way so that we can continue to review it ourselves and glean, you know, information from it on our own. But I, I think we should just go all in and have them do their whole job. Okay, great. I'm seeing. Um, so Dr. Rhodes and Dr. Shabazz, are your hands still up? Uh, yep, mine is because I, I wanted to make a couple of, because I really got to get out of here. Please, Are yeah. Things, is that I uh, after going over this, uh, I, I really would like to be involved with this. However, I, I, I see that Dr. Shabazz is interested. Uh, so if he really is interested in uh, collaborating with you, uh, Michelle and uh, Carrie, I, I'm all right with that. If not, uh, if, he, if he isn't, then I will be there. Uh, so the comment that I have is that uh, given that this is going to be a, uh, a uh, survey of convenience, uh, there are some there are, there are some issues in terms of distribution and who gets it that is going to be critical. And I want to say to you that we need to distribute this so that it reaches a broad audience. If you <coughs> excuse me, look at our charge and look at the groups that are involved with us that we're supposed to be touching base with, it, it says to me that this should be broadly distributed. <coughs> and saying that we can still get the information necessary from African Americans because the way the period has talked about this in terms of demographics. <clears throat> Thank so, you, Dr. Oh. So I, I guess what I'm saying is that I like the way she put this out there. I like the way that she's uh, uh, approaching it. I do have some questions in terms of distribution, who gets it and how they get it. And those, and those that, that question about distribution, who gets to respond to the survey is a critical issue that if not handled carefully, we could find ourselves in, um, <clears throat> in a deep controversy. Absolutely. Okay, so that sounds like one of the key questions that we wanna address. Um, yes, Dr. Shabazz. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, for me, uh, it's sort of the same question as Dr. Rose has just given, but asked maybe a different way. To me, it, it's it's about what value we're setting on the on on this exercise of of a survey. And for me, that boils down to the end value. If we don't set an end value of what will constitute a a um, an ex a credible response rate, then uh, then then it's it, it could be it could be money not well spent. But if we can set an end value and then uh, assess our and then have a strategy of how are we going to get to this kind of response? It's one thing we threw it out at at you know uh, uh, um, you know uh, an eight thousand person mailing or a uh, a townwide 40,000 person mailing. Um, but, you know, breaking that down in some discreet way as to representing feedback of the community uh, of African heritage, that's where the rubber hits the road. Where are we going to get that particular in 
no, numerical value, that N value. And if they've got a strategy of how we get to that, then I'd like to hear that on the front end. If they don't, and it's a townwide distribution to a townwide mailing, like every resident, uh, you know, can go out from, uh, or, or whether it's homeowners or whether it's every resident that we have on uh, on file, then, you know, again, how do we get to the specific end value of people of African heritage? Um, I think we've got to set that at the front end and ask the hard question, can you get, you know, do you have a strategy to get to this, this numerical value? Uh, otherwise, it, it sounds like it's just a, a system-wide broadcast and we don't have any any assurity of what that's gonna bring back. Okay, so I'm thinking about our timing here, I'm thinking about multiple people wanting to be involved in this. I'm thinking about uh, town manager Bachelman will likely want have questions. The president of the council um, will likely have questions. So it may be best for us to invite Kerry to our next meeting and see, or or to a meeting and see if it's possible it would mean that it would be public, um, which is not a problem. Everything would be reported back if we did a smaller committee. But I think both Dr. Shabazz and Dr. Rhodes are raising excellent questions. Uh, Yvonne also had some input here and everybody probably will as, so is, would that be a favorable way for folks to move forward if I first, Instead of setting up a subcommittee right now um, of two people, myself and one other, should we invite Carrie to our next meeting and see if we can at least get these questions that have been raised answered and invite uh, the town manager as well to that meeting? Uh, yes. Um, okay. <clears throat> I, I think that's a, a, a good idea. And, and, and we don't necessarily have to have that as a part of our meeting. We also could have a subcommittee of more than two. And it could be three in which we can then post that meeting with, with, with the other, uh, with uh, Bachelman and, and Lynn or whomever. And, and to Dr. Shabazz, you know, your, your point is well taken. How we get to the, the number of people that we want to distribute this to, how do we decide that? You know, uh, uh, when you read this, uh, read this uh, summary of the proposal, it indicates that you know uh, there, there, there is a way, some ways that there, there, or that we are that are being suggested. One is going through the portal itself, i.e., if you know, under the AHRA portal. Uh, another one through the town engagement uh, portal. Uh, but the, the central question is. How do we get to a credible number of African Americans and get their responses? Because that is part, uh, part of our charge. The other part of our, uh, our charge is, that relates to that is that we need to find out what other people th think about this uh, 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 of, of reparation. So that's in there also. But the way that Kerry is uh, suggested in here is that you capture all of that via the demographics that come back uh, when the surveys are turned in. Uh, that on the survey itself, there will be demographic information that will be requested. Yeah, and we should think about the fact that we spent a good deal of time and money on the Black Census with the Donahue Institute. And so how can we use what we discovered in that process um, for this. We should be, that should be informing um, where we're reaching out, I would think. Um, yes, Yvonne. I, I have another meeting that starts right now. So okay. I have to, I have to bounce, but I, I did want to say that I, I'm not sure. I think in this document, it says that they're relying on us to do the distribution. And so uh, meeting, you know, us meeting together, trying to figure out what those avenues would be, would be yes. more important. I wouldn't expect them to know where to distribute anything. So I think it's about us figuring out a way or finding the the person or the group that might have access or groups that would, might have access to us being able to distribute it as best as we can. And um, then the other thing is, I think it might be premature to have a meeting 
until we figure that part out. I mean, a meeting with the town manager and all that until we figure out what our role is first and then invite him. The only plus to inviting him is because we're going to ask him to pay for it. Exactly. <laughs> That's, That's bingo. Oh. <laughs> so we have Pamela, yeah. uh, Pamela and um, Jennifer from the town are with us. So that I'm leaning toward instead of a subcommittee, just inviting Carrie to our next meeting and see if she can do that. We'll just invite Carrie. We'll have Pamela and, Jen and or Jennifer here. So we don't need town manager Balkelman just yet. But um, does that, would that work for everybody? I, 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 I like that a lot. Um, okay. And I'm sorry that I have to leave. I just have this, like, I have this 3.30. There's one last thing I'd love for us to talk about at some point together. And that it, are the guests who came to our last meeting and some of the things that they brought up. I mean, I, I had some issues with some of the things they said and the way they said it. Um, and I think it, it goes more towards um, what, um, I don't know. I, it's longer than I have time to explain, but it would be great to get some feedback um, from you. And uh, I, mean, I really appreciated your comments at that meeting, um, Dr. Shabazz. I was like, you go on. I loved it. It was that part was great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we'll definitely right. unpack that for Thank sure. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be, okay. I'll be at the next one. Bye. Thanks, Ivan. Okay. Um, so good. All right. So we'll invite Carrie to the next meeting, which will be uh, next Monday. We'll plan on two agenda items. One will be unpacking the listening session a bit just to sort of talk through some of that. And then we'll also, oh, we can't do the 16th. So it's going to be the 23rd. Um, <laughs> Saul Alexis, like, hold on. Um, so yeah, um, it will be the 23rd that we will try to convene um with harry um and so if there aren't and then um i please do respond to the email about the amherst neighbors event because that is set right now if we want to do it in the month of february which would be ideal um then it's february 2nd right now um so that's fast approaching so please do respond by email if that doesn't I'll send something out and then, and we won't likely need every member, although every member would be warmly, it sounds like invited to participate. So I'll send more details. Um, Dr. Shabazz, is your hand still up? Yeah, I, I have uh, something I just would like to express to all of my uh, count, uh, fellow assembly members here. And, uh, you know, it's, I don't know if it would be any different if like some other committees, we had a, a, a co-chair or vice chair situation where someone else could be empowered to be able to speak to another counselor, uh, particularly the council president. But boy, I sure would value, uh, I do value, and I think our whole committee can, should value what the opinion of someone like Lynn Greismer about this our community engagement strategy you know we're, we're i know she like uh counselor uh and, and chair um miller here they are our ultimate audience for this work um but you know with in the case of lynn greismer she brings to this uh having been the you know with the donahue institute and uh, for so many years and engaged in these types <laughs> of, of community development, community engagement, community survey kinds of processes professionally as a job. I mean, just as we're looking at the Donahue Institute as a possible uh, entity. And, and, and two other quick segues here. I have been looking at the Providence community engagement work uh, their truth telling and reconciliation doc 74 page document was ba based in part on a survey, Qualtrics survey that was done by folks at Roger Williams University. I've been in touch with uh, uh, one of the persons at Rogers Williams in terms of how they were supported to, to contribute to, uh, to the project of surveying the community. Um, and uh, I've also been looking at at uh, uh, North Carolina, uh, uh, 
oh gosh, the um, our folks Asheville? The, yeah, Asheville, our folks in Asheville, and looking at where they are and some of their process, and they had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, they had they had salary support for their for their particular commission efforts. These are places a little little bit larger than ours our place, but it's the same work. It's the same labor, whatever the scale is of the, of the municipality. Um, and they had a lot of, lot of support. So, you know, I'm, I, uh, the opinion of Lynn Greismer on whether the steps we've been taking so far with the black census, and now with the question of this survey, are they the, the, the right steps and are we in the right fit in 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 terms of discussing with the Donahue Institute what we're really trying to get at as as a set of uh, um, as a way of uh, uh, presenting the ultimate report that we're a few months from from uh, being expected to present. Um, I would just really you know whether not and just to say at our next meeting. I don't know. Sometimes people can be more more at ease, you know, in a one on one. And uh, but I but I wouldn't want to just do that uh, at, and be the only one getting the information to the disadvantage of my other counselors. I'd like to be able to do it in a way that whatever I could learn, whatever I could get in that in that conversation with uh, with Lynn Greismer could then be be, uh, uh, you know, shared. Uh, with with everyone, but uh, she's done this kind of work, and um, and then she's also one that we want the work to convince. So I just hope that we're taking all the right steps. Yeah, and what I would say to that, Dr. Shabazz, is you should feel free to reach out to Lynn and have that discussion with her. Absolutely, um, uh, you know, with respect to her former formal role as president, there is an election tonight. Um, so, um, whether or not in the future Lynn will be the president or not is undetermined, but either way, I think that having a conversation with Lynn would be beneficial. Um, and, and then you could go ahead and bring that back to us. Um, and of course, if given Lynn's background on this, um, whether or not president, not president, if she wanted to participate in the larger conversation with the Dunahue Institute, um, and she has previously, that would always be welcome. Is that, does that work? Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, so are there any other comments or questions right now? Anything else? All right. So our next meeting then, just to clarify once again, will be the 23rd at two o'clock. Um, but we will, of course, see each other on the 11th. If I could ask, and I will send this out in an email, that folks arrive um, by 6 o'clock for a practice session to the best of your ability. If you could do that, that would be fantastic. Um, and then otherwise, you know, if you need to get there later, just please text me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, adjourn the meeting at 3.40 p.m. And thank you to everybody. Great meeting. See you soon.